Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's program. Before I begin, I'd like to take a moment to draw your attention to our disclaimer on the screen. My name is Joan Woodward, and I'll be your moderator for today's program. This is the sixth webinar in our Wednesdays with Woodward series, where I have the pleasure of speaking with thought leaders and important, on about important topics that impact us all, both in our personal and professional lives. Over the next few months, every other Wednesday, roughly, through Thanksgiving, we'll host these free educational webinars, so we we'll hope you'll join us. Visit the travelersinstitute.org to see recordings of our past webinars and register for the upcoming webinars. I want to say a special thank you today to our partner organizations who helped us make this program possible. True Motion, the Small Business Entrepreneurship Council, Axion. And today I'm excited to discuss an issue of particular importance to the traveler's family and communities, preventing distracted driving. In 2017, the Travelers Institute launched our Every Second Matters campaign when we saw shocking jump in roadway fatalities in that year. This chart shows a historical look at traffic fatalities going back to the 1970s. In the 70s and 80s, more than 50,000 people lost their lives in the United States on roads every year. After that point, you'll see this gradual downward trend through the early 2000s, and then a significant drop off around the time of the financial crisis. In 2019, more than 36,000 people died on our roads. And on top of that, more than 2.7 million people were injured. Increased seatbelt use and reduced drunk driving have substantially lower fatalities over the years, as has vehicle improvements like airbags and electronic, electronic stability control. The red line represents pedestrian fatalities, which were their highest level in 30 years in 2018. There are a lot of variables at play and we understand that, not only distraction, but it's an important contributor. In fact, 77% of drivers that we polled in our Travelers Risk Index say that they make or take calls while driving and more than 30% said they've had a near miss because of their own distraction. And we find that number probably a little low because are you really gonna fess up if you had a near miss or a crash uh, and you're gonna tell your insurance company. So we think 30% probably is low. But there's a silver lining here that we believe there's reasons to be optimistic. Over the years, we've seen shifts in thinking about drunk driving and smoking, even with seatbelt usage, and technological advances show potential to improve safety. Changing thinking around distracted driving could be our next big opportunity. But we need to collectively change social norms about what's acceptable in our cars uh, today. Today we have the pleasure of, I have the pleasure of interviewing two experts in this field who are instrumental in encouraging safer driving behaviors for our Travelers customers who are on Teledrive Telematics app. And Teledrive is a 90 day program that uses a smartphone app to monitor your driving performance. It rates your driving based on certain high risk activities and gives you a driving score. Safe driving habits can lead to savings up to 20% while riskier driving habits can result in higher premiums. So last month, Travelers announced an enhanced version of our IntelliDrive program with several improvements being made. Our speakers today will talk about how the app works, both from a technology side and a behavioral science angle, and share what updates have been made in the most recent version. So with that, I'm pleased to introduce our speakers today. Ben Kotrich is the Senior Data Scientist at TrueMotion. TrueMotion is a technology company based in Boston that provides the leading smartphone driving technology platforms. And TrueMotion uses smartphone technology and data to make driving safer. Specifically, it does power the Travelers IntelliDrive app. In his role with TrueMotion, Ben focuses on effective strategies for behavioral modifications focused on distracted driving. Then we have Tom Torsha. Tom uh, is uh, the lead and managing director of personal insurance, where he is the business owner of IntelliDrive. Working closely with Ben and his team at TrueMotion to evaluate and enhance the app. In addition, Tom has responsibilities across national auto, emerging markets, and auto innovation. So before I hand it off to Ben, a quick note about submitting your questions. So as you're listening to these two experts talk, I uh, will take your audience questions towards the end of the program, 
but you can submit your questions while they're speaking. So just hover over the middle bottom of your screen and click on the Q&A function found at the bottom again. You can send your question using your name or check the box that says send anonymously if you don't want me to call your name out with your question. So uh, with that, I'm pleased to hand it off to our first speaker, Ben Cotridge. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. And uh, so the mission of our company, True Motion, as, uh, as Joan just mentioned in her introduction, is to make driving safer. Um, and so if you go to the next slide, you'll see the, a picture, or actually the next one after that, a uh, picture of an uh, installation in our previous offices in Boston that symbolizes the deaths and injuries caused by distracted driving. But True Motion was founded on the idea that smartphones can also be uh, part of the solution to the problem. And so what we do is harness the power of modern day smartphones to understand how drivers drive uh, and to help them drive more safely. So how do we do that? Uh, on the next slide, um, you can see that smartphones today are just absolutely jam packed with different kinds of sensors. They're incredibly sophisticated data collection devices. They have things like accelerometers, gyroscopes, magnetometers, the GPS that you're um, probably familiar with. And these sensors can yield incredibly detailed information about driving behavior. And, and that's the information that powers programs like IntelliDrive. So we go to the next uh, slide, you can see what the um, uh, data from these sensors uh, actually looks like. Uh, so it's kind of a, just a jumbled mess of lines. But if you know uh, how to make sense of this, this data, it can be turned into valuable and objective information about how and when a driver is distracted by their smartphone, when they're speeding or braking harshly, how many miles they're driving, what time of day, and even when they get into crashes. So in order to be able to do this, we use a whole suite of proprietary machine learning algorithms that we've developed at Tremotion over the past few years. Uh, and these algorithms answer a series of questions when a person takes a trip. So what I'm gonna do over the next few slides is take you through those questions one by one. So the next slide, you'll see the, the first question that uh, needs to be answered, and that's, that's this one. Uh, the IntelliDrive app spends most of its time asleep, uh, so it only wakes up and begins collecting data when it detects a change in location. And, and when a trip is, uh, collect, is completed, it goes back to sleep. And all this happens automatically without any action or intervention needed by the driver. So once a trip is detected, we can distinguish car trips from other modes of transportation, like plane trips or public transportation trips, very, very accurately. Now, once we've determined that a trip is a car trip, we go to the next slide, we'll want to answer this question, whether you were the driver or the passenger on that trip. And we're probably best known in the industry for our skill in automatically detecting this with, with a high level of, of precision. How do we do it? Uh, well, we look at a whole bunch of different features with our algorithms in the data. Um, one of the things we look at is identifying the exact moment the car came to a stop at the end of a trip and the moment the person exited the car. And by looking at the signal that's created by the turning motion in that moment, whether the phone twisted to the left or to the right gives a really powerful clue as to whether you were on the driver's side or the passenger side of the car when you got out. And that tells us whether you were the driver or passenger. Um, so once we know you're the driver, we can begin to determine how you were driving. So here we look at data from the sensors capturing the dynamics of the vehicle. So the inertial measurement unit, the GPS, to determine things like braking and acceleration events, but also we compare the speed data to the speed limits on the roads traveled and that can tell us when uh, speeding events happened. And of course we know, you know how far you drove and at what time of day as well. So moving on from the dynamics of the vehicle, we can also uh, have used um, algorithms that we've developed to detect interactions with the mobile phone. And so we're able to break these distracted driving behaviors down into five different categories that you can see here. And these different categories have different levels of risk associated with them. And we do this by combining signals from the operating system. So that's things like whether the screen of the phone was on or off, or whether there was a phone call ongoing, together with characteristic signal about the fine scale uh, movement of the phone and even things like the, the frequencies at which the phone vibrates uh, as, it, as, it's driving along, as you're driving along. And collecting this, this sort of data across a whole population lets us see what distracted driving patterns look like across a whole population of drivers. So on the next slide, uh, you can see that, you know, if we look at those numbers in aggregate, um, they can be pretty shocking. So these are some aggregate numbers from uh, a sample of about 4 million trips, not from IntelliDrive, but this is from an app that we at TrueMotion offer directly to consumers called TrueMotion Family. It's, a, it's an app that focuses on, on teen driving safety. Um, and uh, the average driver in this sample of data spends about 10 minutes using their phone for every hour of driving time. You can see how that breaks uh, down into different distraction types in the graphic there. But one thing to know is that distracted driving is pretty 
unevenly distributed in the population. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that there are a whole bunch of drivers out there who are only distracted some of the time, but there's a small number of drivers who are distracted a great deal of the time. And the kind of promise of an app like IntelliDrive or a program like IntelliDrive is to give those many good drivers an opportunity to be rewarded for their safe driving choices rather than subsidizing the few dangerous drivers out there with their policy premiums. Um, and so in the next slide, um, you know, I, I wanted to just quickly show that this doesn't just matter because it saves consumers money, even though it does, but it can also save lives. Um, so, you know, it's sort of widely believed and that, uh, you know, distracted driving is a risky behavior, but thanks to our crash detection technology, you know, our data lets us look at individual collisions and see what happened in the moments right before a crash. And if we compare the amount of distracted driving in those seconds before a crash, and that's the red bar, to other times in the trip, and that's that turquoise bar, bar there, we can see that drivers interacted with their phones about twice as much in the moments before a crash than at other times. So this is really, really clear evidence that smartphone distraction substantially increases the risk of a crash. So what can we do to help? Um, in this slide, you see three screenshots uh, uh, of the IntelliDrive app. Uh, and what this shows is that in addition to just measuring distracted driving, we can use this information to actually help customers drive more safely, help them put their phones down while they're behind the wheel. Uh, so on the left panel, you can see that the, the IntelliDrive app gives feedback about a driver's overall score, but it also breaks that score down by categories. You can see hard braking and acceleration there. If you kept scrolling down, you'd, you'd see distracted driving as well. Uh, it shows you your individual driving score, but in the middle screenshot, you can see it also shows the score of other drivers on the same policy. So we think that's a great tool for starting conversations within a family. Uh, and then on the right, uh, the screenshot shows that uh, the app also surfaces streaks of distraction free driving. So this brings into play some really well understood behavioral mechanics uh, from the world of gaming to incentivize uh, distraction free driving. And there's one more screenshot on, on, on the last slide. Um, and that's to show that this communication with the customer doesn't just happen within the app, but we also use this kind of carefully calibrated cadence of push notifications that engage a driver throughout their journey uh, uh, in the program. So for example, at the top, you can see a push notification they'll get when they take the first drive at the beginning of the program, or when they hit certain milestones like a, 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 um, in their streaks of distraction-free trips, for example, at the bottom. So if we go to the next slide, um, I'll just talk briefly about the fact that these approaches uh, to using smartphone telematics for improving driving behavior that we just showed you are not just proven out uh, in the insurance marketplace, but we've actually you know, made these choices in how to communicate, how to frame uh, uh, the financial incentives or rewards uh, and feedback uh, with a, they're, they're informed by um, you know, a rigorous program of research that we've been conducting with partners in academia. So what I'm describing here in this, in this slide is, is a study that we carried out in collaboration with the researchers at the UPenn Medical School. Uh, the study was funded by the Federal Highway Administration, and, and these folks treat distracted driving as a major public health issue. And the, so the study was set up according to the gold standard for clinical research, which is a randomized controlled trial. So what we did there is we monitored drivers for a baseline period and then randomly assigned them to different experiences so we could measure which ones were the most effective at reducing distracted driving. And this study was the largest federally funded study of its kind to date. Um, and the first set of results were presented at the Transportation Research Board conference earlier this year, and we expect uh, to have further publications out later on this year. One thing that's uh, delayed uh, the publications of this research is that some of our collaborators are also emergency room physicians, so they've had other stuff to do in the last half a year. Um, that's related to the same topic I want to talk about next, which is, which is how um, driving patterns have changed during, during this pandemic. So I think we all know from watching the roadways this spring, the driving volume obviously dropped during the lockdowns. But how did COVID affect other driving risk factors? So here in this slide, I'm showing uh, aggregated data from the Travelers and Teledrive app, and it, it allows us to look at some of the changes in the first half of the year. Um, this specific plot shows the change in distracted driving relative to a baseline period of typical driving behavior during the very beginning of 2020. Um, and uh, what we're looking at specifically here is the in-hand active swiping and typing category of, of distracted driving behavior, which we think is the most risky of the five types um, that we can identify. And what we see is that um, distracted driving increased in, in March and April. And while the numbers have come down a little again since then, we're still seeing distraction values significantly above the baseline. And I can only imagine that the sort of stress of the pandemic, our desire to feel 
connected to one another while we're, we're all apart has got to play a, a role here of some sort. But other dangerous driving behaviors have also increased uh, during, during the lockdown and the pandemic. So in the next slide, uh, you'll see a, a view of how speeding changed over the first half of the year. Again, this is relative to baseline at the beginning of the year in January. Um, and during the, the peak of the lockdown, the number of trips with extreme speeding events, so these are, these are trips where uh, drivers drove over 100 miles per hour, more than doubled. Um, good news here is that as of May, these numbers are, are back down to normal. Um, both of these things are kind of consistent with observations that you, you may have come across in the media uh, from the industry more generally that collision frequencies seem to have been reduced, but the severity of crashes seems to be on the rise uh, uh, during COVID-19. So to sort of summarize this all, you know, it's not good news overall, but to my mind, the silver lining here is that smartphone telematics and UBI programs like IntelliDrive, they give us both visibility into what's going on with driving behaviors, but also the tools to shape and influence that behavior. And so to my mind, along with all the other things that COVID-19 has kind of cast into sharp relief in society, this crisis is also showing us that the time for usage-based insurance has come. And so with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to Tom. Hey, well, thank you, Ben. I think a great job summarizing the, the true value uh, of True Motion. And uh, True Motion has been a great partner of ours for a number of years now. Um, so I'm excited and, and appreciate the opportunity, Joan, to uh, talk to this group about what we're doing in telematics uh, and, and our overall excitement. And I think it's pretty clear from Ben's presentation that the science is pretty amazing. Uh, and I think the value proposition uh, is uh, certainly one where we want to continue to invest in uh, and, and really make some incremental gains over the, over the near term here. So if we want to jump into the presentation, I love starting on this slide. Uh, I think it's really, it, it describes uh, the true value of the data and, and how we see it. And you know, how I, like to, how I like to summarize the value of telematics, it's, it's really a win-win-win. Uh, and for us, it's, it's a win for travelers, it's a win for our customers, and it's a win for our agents. And specifically from an agency perspective, you know, where we see the value of telematics, it's about creating a competitive offering. You know, we see the value of telematics as creating a more sustainable long-term product that we think will allow our agents uh, to compete in a more challenging auto marketplace into the future. And, and we think telematics will absolutely provide an innovative way of, of doing that. And certainly long-term long sustainability. Uh, we wanna continue to invest uh, in our auto program. And we think this is, this is on the leading edge of where the auto marketplace is going. It's pretty clear in the middle of, of, the, of the slide here, the, the value as we see um, from an insurance perspective uh, and we think that's largely the reason of what we want to capture. We want to highlight that the value of telematics and the data that Ben and his team are able to um, uh, collaborate with us is really about allowing and uh, allowing safer drivers to pay less for auto insurance. And we think that's a great value prop. Uh, we think customers absolutely appreciate that level of control and transparency. Uh, and we can see the demand for it. So we want to create products and we want to create a marketplace that allows that to thrive. And we can move to the next slide. And I'd like to talk a little bit about our program. Joan keyed it up perfectly. Uh, IntelliDrive is a 90-day uh, telematics program uh, that we have available in 38 states. So we have a pretty wide spread of uh, saturation across markets. And that's what excites us. We really want to get this capability out to as many markets as, as we truly can. Uh, and uh, recently, uh, as, as Joan alluded to, we made some pretty um, large investments and changes in the program to continue to um, provide an incentive for our agents and our customers that we think aligns really well um, with the traveler's value prop overall. Uh, and, and some of those things are, are really tied to today's conversation around distracted driving. I'm sure we don't need to go into too many uh, layers of depth on the value of distraction. It's pretty evident. It's pretty evident we're all driving around on, on the road today. And, and Ben alluded to it. Uh, it's, it's a unique time uh, that we're in, uh, but we're, we're learning a lot about uh, the effects of COVID, not just about um, the frequency of driving, but also just as importantly, how we're all driving on the roads. Uh, and we think that the conversation is uh, probably more important now than it's ever been 
of how we want to make sure that our product is evolving, but also responding to the opportunity in front of us. Uh, and since we launched the mobile program in partnership with True Motion back in 2017, we've really been um, analyzing and um, providing incentives for our drivers, our insureds, across four core variables. Um, it, from the very beginning, we've been providing incentives around acceleration, braking, speeding, and time of day, all incredibly predictive uh, and incredibly valuable. Um, the fifth variable that we recently added in May of this year, and we now have available uh, in nine of the 38 markets, is distraction. And our belief is that that might be the most predictive and the most valuable of all the variables. Uh, that we have currently in the IntelliDrive program. You know, so our enthusiasm and, and our level of investment in the program is, is to, to, to roll that out with a level of uh, speed and efficiency, um, because I think that makes our program even better. Um, and at the very, at the very you know, top of the, the slide, I think it's really important to point out there's, there's gotta be a real connection here to savings. Uh, and I think there is. Um, for most of the states today, we're offering a 20% savings for the safest of drivers. Well, we've increased that. So you know, in the states where we've introduced distracted driving, um, we've moved that savings up to 30%. We think it's that valuable, it's that powerful, uh, and we really wanna make sure that our program connects to customers, connects to our agents, but also make sure uh, that it's, it's industry leading from a segmentation perspective. We think that drives long-term value across the board. We can move to the next slide. Okay, distraction, and uh, certainly we've alluded to it uh, to a number of slides here. You, you get the essence of the of the conversation, uh, but you know certainly for one of the key one of the key items I wanted to make sure we highlighted is you know what how do we see the value from a traveler's perspective? Um, I think Ben's conversation around the value of that those seconds before an accident happens, you know it's 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 pretty clear you know how predictive um, and how risky distraction is. And, it, and that segmentation power is why we're in, introducing deeper, uh, deeper discounts for, for people that put their phone down while they're driving. Um, but it's the how that I think is just as important. Uh, and what we've done with IntelliDrive uh, and our recent enhancements, not only to introduce distraction as a variable, but also provide more real-time content in the mobile app experience that we think will relate um, more positively to our customers. And I love the visual. Ben stole, stole my thunder on the slides uh, of the mobile app experience. And our team spent a considerable amount of time uh, working with uh, customers and getting agency feedback about how can we evolve our app experience. And it's a really unique experience um, when you think about um, a, a, our ability in real time to give customers feedback. Uh, and, and we think the enhancements that we've made are uh, a, a continuation of our, our want and I think our overall need, you know, to, to be, um, you know, more proactive and, and more responsive to customers. And what we've done with the IntelliDrive program and the IntelliDrive product is we've taken the content that we put together from Every Second Matters and the Travelers Institute, and it's now directly integrated into our app experience. So real-time content. That's dynamic for customers, um, and and the idea of, of gamifying the experience. And you know, we're all very familiar with mobile apps, and I'm sure we all have our favorites. Uh, but I think one of the things that we've learned is that experience um, needs to be positive because what we want you to do is um, not think of IntelliDrive like a black box. We want you to think of IntelliDrive like an integrated experience. Uh, and if we can capture you know that customer's attention. And we should drive great content to them, and that content should resonate. Uh, and and certainly the focus of our of our updated mobile app experience is is focused mostly on distraction. While all variables are very important, we know that unique variable is so actionable, um, and we should do our very best to make sure we 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 provide as much feedback and as much content as we can for our customers, and also hopefully they have a little fun with it too, right, Ben? Next slide. A scorecard. So maybe this is a good way of describing where are we on our journey? 
Uh, and I will say we we feel great about the progress that we've made in the adoption of telematics. Uh, the left hand side of the slide depicts, uh, I think, certainly positive momentum. Uh, and we're absolutely encouraged by the direction and um, the early success we've seen since we launched the mobile program. Uh, and you can see year over year and, and kind of half of the year to where we are today, forward momentum uh, and certainly some really great adoption rates, but there's still opportunity. And I think that's the most important piece. And um, are we done? By no means. Uh, and what we really want to do is continue to demonstrate the value of telematics, but also make sure that we're providing the right type of education and awareness so our agents uh, are well informed and have the tools and resources that they need to sell the program and also our customers. And, um, you know, we, we obviously have um, received a, a lot of really great feedback um, and some critical feedback too. And to be to fully transparent and to be balanced, we've learned a lot. Uh, with a program in market for, you know, just over three years now, um, we've, we've tallied uh, a lot of feedback. And I think our objective, uh, you know, for the program is to continue to refine and enhance. Uh, it's, it's certainly not done. And we think of it as a continuation over time of how we want to put uh, a, a really strong pro program and product together that resonates with customers. Uh, we did a study uh, just a, about a year ago and asked customers, you know, generally, how interested are you in telematics? And I don't think it was a surprise. We did it internally. I know we've seen similar statistics uh, in other forums, but over half of customers we asked are extremely or very interested. They want a digital telematics offer. And that's exactly what IntelliDrive is. Um, so, you know, we're seeing a response rate that I'm, I'm excited and encouraged about, but I can confidently tell you, you know, we still have opportunity um, and, and we want to make sure that, you know, this is a partnership you know, not only for travelers' interests, but also for our agents, brokers, and, and obviously our customers too. And we think it's simple. You know, I think there's a part of this that is, it's about offering, you know, and, and we've tested that idea a little bit in the marketplace and, you know, some, some uh, small case examples, you know, we're, we're, we're hyperactive in, in um, offering the program. The response has been excellent, you know, and, and it shapes up really well to the, some of the survey data that we've, that we've compared in the past. So, it's always an opportunity to make sure we're offering the program and give customers the ability to make the choice if it's a program for them. You can go to the next slide. The benefits of telematics. I spoke a lot about uh, most of the bullet points on the left-hand side, but I think as a, as a quick summary, uh, we, we absolutely think that this allows us to attract more safe drivers. And, and that's certainly, I think, a long-term value proposition, uh, certainly for our customers and certainly for our agents. Um, enhance over value prop. This is this is about innovation. You know, this is a not this is no longer, I think, thought of as a niche type of offering or program. Um, you know, we think of this product as as ready for scale, and that's important. Uh, we need to have you know the right type of program that can do that, and we think we do. Um, but it, it's that important, I think, to the overall value proposition, certainly of our agents, um, to innovate and to innovate in uh, the agency channel uh, that we, we see some real long-term opportunity. You know, give a competitive quote. It's all about, um, like I mentioned before, offering the program, but there's incentives uh, and there's incentives to do that around discounts. And, you know, we think that that, that combination provides you know, more competitive quote and, and more, more sales too. And I think that's, that's a huge win in this type of uh, environment, certainly. And the proof is in the results. Uh, overall, like what we've seen so far is two out of three drivers that have signed up and, and gone through the IntelliDrive program are saving real dollars because they participated in IntelliDrive. The 9A program, you have the opportunity to opt out if the program's not for you. But for those customers that see it through, Two out of three are saving real dollars at the end of the day, and we think that's we think that value prop alone is is worth uh, worth a try in the IntelliDrive program, and the social awareness, the social good, of course. Our our pivot to add distraction um, was a meaningful moment for our program, uh, and I think a meaningful moment as we as we describe the program, you know, certainly at this level of uh, enthusiasm, and excitement across uh, across the country, really, um, and we want to continue to advance. 
that conversation, and that's about reducing distracted driving. Uh, and if IntelliDrive can do that, if it can change behavior, that's saving real lives at the end of the day as well. You know, just quickly as a, as a summary, I wanted to make sure I cover to you know, other pieces of content that we've created because it's important and we continue to evolve the marketing message. We continue to evolve the tools and resources. Uh, we have more social campaigns today than we ever did for the IntelliDrive program. So we, we want to make this a digital experience. We got to give you the tools to sell like that. You know, so I'm excited about what our, our marketing and design teams have been able to create. Uh, and it's really allowed us to be more targeted uh, in our marketing efforts and, and really be more knowledgeable and, and have the expertise to you know, navigate some really thoughtful questions that I think customers have. And, and these type of programs warrant that, that conversation and we encourage it. Uh, so we wanna make sure the resources and the capabilities are in your hands. And as our program evolves, so should our content. And, and hopefully what you've seen in our resources, on our toolkit, our dashboards, some really fresh creative content that we've brought along with the brand new app experience that Ben and his team were able to design and, and implement for us to all the markets that were available today. So um, it's, been, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with Ben and his team it's a journey that we are on and it's, and I think it's a worthwhile one. So thanks. All right. Well, uh, Tom and Ben, thank you so much. It's really, really fascinating data. And, um, we are just, you know, so pleased to have launched this whole campaign three years ago around every second matters to raise awareness. And you guys are actually making it happen, uh, to encourage these safer driving behaviors. So, um, I'm going to ask, ask a few questions, then we'll get to our audience questions, which we have a ton coming in. Thank you all. If you don't know how to do it, just scroll to the bottom of your screen and go to Q&A and type in your question. I'll, I'll get to as many as we can. But um, Ben, you mentioned something I want to I poke a little further, which is the research you're doing around behavioral modification. So you're actually looking with academics, which I think is fantastic. You're working with the academic community around behavior modification related to distracted driving. So what works? Tell us what works. Well, first of all, you know, one thing that I think we've learned in, in doing this over a number of years is that it's actually not as easy as you might think um, to, to change driving behavior. So I, I think that's worth mentioning because, uh, you know, at first blush, you might think that it's, it's, it's a relatively straightforward thing to do, but especially when it comes to, to cell phone addiction, which our, our partners in, in the research world, you know, really think of right alongside smoking, right alongside opiate addiction, it's 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 a an, uh, a behavioral psychological um, challenge that's on on par with with uh, with those public health issues and you know also uh, the number of related deaths of course are, are an order of magnitude and are not far off. Um, so I think one thing we found that I'll say is there's probably no one silver bullet. There isn't an easy do this then distracted driving is gone. Um, but what we found is that the most effective thing is probably combining a variety of approaches together. And I'll say that the things we've found to be most effective um, in our research kind of broadly fall into two categories. One is, is rewards. Um, you know, that includes financial rewards. And, and especially um, if those rewards are smaller and more frequent, uh, those, those tend to work, uh, work better. And it's, it's important to get the amount, uh, the frequency, and the framing of those, of those incentives and those rewards just right. Um, and so, so very, very small tweaks we found to the phrasing of a message or the exact amount, the amount of reward that you give over a, a 90 day period um, could have a totally different effect depending on whether you dole it out, you know, once a week or whether you give it out, you know, once a month. Um, so, so getting that uh, just right is very important. The second category is gamification. I think, you know, you see this in, in the IntelliDrive app, you know, two examples of things that, that we found to work well are leaderboards. And that activates this well-known um, um, behavioral principle of social comparison. We as people are hardwired to care about how we compare to others. Um, and the second one is, is streaks. Uh, and that activates um, another behavioral principle, which is loss aversion. So we, we actually, um, as humans, are hardwired to uh, dislike losing $100 more than we like gaining $100. Um, and so streaks kind of activate is, is one uh, technique that, that can be used to activate these kind of really core uh, behavioral uh, principles. Um, 
Thank you, Ben. And, and let's just follow up on that. So feedback's really important and changing behavior, you're saying, and the streaks, uh, which you can see on the app. Uh, I've been doing this now for, for several months. And I, as soon as I have a, a, a trip, I stop in my garage and I look to see how I did. So uh, it, is, it is addictive to, it's like your golf handicap, right? You want to know how you did relative to others, relative to what you did last week. Um, so tell us about the timing of the feedback. Is the timing important or how, how do you think about timing of feedback? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you, you answered the question in, in your question there um, with your own experience. You know, the, the, the more timely uh, the feedback is, the more effective we found it, it, it to be. So you want to have the feedback as close in time. Um, so if I tell you what you did um, right after a trip, that's much better than if I give you that feedback a month, a month later. But it also matters how we tell you. Um, so positive framing we found in our research is, is a lot more successful than negative framing. And again, you know, to put the kind of framework of the public health research on this, you know, there, uh, you know, doctors and researchers will talk about efficacy and acceptability of a treatment. So as an example, if you think of uh, there could be a smoking cessation treatment that uses really powerful electrical shocks to stop you from smoking, that may be like really effective. Like if you go through that treatment, like you will never smoke again 100% of the time. But guess what? Like nobody wants to do that treatment because they don't want to have like powerful electric shocks uh, uh, done on them. And so this would be like an example of a very high efficacy, but a really low acceptability treatment. And so in terms of our messaging, there's, there's a very close analogy there. We want to we wanna very carefully craft the framing, the frequency, the timing of these messages so that rather than making drivers turn off their notifications or worse, uninstall the app or drop out of the program, we want to keep them engaged and keep them retained in the program. Okay, so, so that's great, Ben. So then, Tom, how did Ben's research inform the content that we have now available on Teledrive? I mean, how, is the, how are those decisions made about what to include, making it positive versus negative? Yeah, and, and, and it's so important for us when we introduce a new mobile app experience, move away from black box, because that's truly, I think, how telematics programs were designed from the very origination. And that mentality of stick in your vehicle, continue as you normally do, send back to insurance company and rate appropriately. We're trying to break that stigma. And it's a challenging one to get over, no doubt. And we haven't solved it yet. But I think data uh, and, and analytics that, that Ben have described is the important foundational point that we're trying to, to better understand. Uh, and the idea of streaks is uh, certainly one that we collaborated on for some time with Ben's group. I think it's a perfect way of, of leaning into this experience and trying to learn the magnitude uh, of, of behavioral influence that it could essentially have. Um, and we are uh, out in 38 states today with the brand new app experience. And we made a decision, even in states where we're not rating on distraction as a variable, to push streaks and that gamified element across all of our markets. We think it's that important and that impactful um, that even if we're not yet rating on distraction, we should, we should provide that carrot for customers to engage with. And I think I had the same experience you did, Joan, when I had the IntelliDrive app on my phone. It, it becomes this level of um, wanting to better yourself and wanting to compete. And the family opportunity certainly exists for multiple driver households where you're having this competitive battle back and forth. Um, and that momentum, that energy, we want to capture that. And we've never had the chance to do it before. Uh, and, you know, what a fun way of bringing it into our app experience uh, and providing that real-time feedback. So, you know, it's, it's been, um, you know, early learnings, a couple of months in the marketplace. We've gotten great agency feedback. Uh, we're, we allowed a number of agents across the country to test, test drive our, our IntelliDrive app for themselves, even if they weren't you know, travelers insured. Um, and the feedback has been, you know, resoundingly positive. So, um, the idea of moving from black box into this, you know, more engaging, uh, more hopefully rewarding experience is, is certainly one, I think, of many investments we're going to make in uh, the IntelliDrive program. Great. So, so what happens after 90 days are up? I'm getting this question a lot coming in on the chat feature here. So after 90 days, uh, Tom, can they continue to use this app? They're just not rated on, on, their, on their, their driving after the 90 days. How does that work? So today it's just 90 days. Uh, and, you know, we've gotten more of that feedback going recently than we ever have before. So we're, we're doing something right. You know, what I hear resounding is something is working and something is connecting. Um, because the years of which I've been working on this program, no one's asked us to go to day 91. 
uh, in our old mobile app experience. Um, so it's certainly one high on our team's radar is what do we do at day 91 and beyond? Because um, today it's, it's really just a, a snapshot of time um, that the IntelliDrive app is essentially working. Um, and after that, you know, it, it, it isn't anymore. So I take that feedback uh, and, and it's not the first time we've heard it. Um, so I think that's an encouraging signal you know, that we need to rethink some of that 91 days and beyond, because there's certainly something I think customers, um, you know, and certainly families too, I think we've heard that as well, want that level of engagement and, and want that level of insight into, uh, into how they're driving. Okay, so, so the proof's in the pudding, Tom, uh, tell us, I, mean, I got a number of questions on this. Uh, do we have results that might indicate this is improving driving behavior? It's early. You know, it's certainly early and the partnership with Ben and his team, I think will allow us to make, you know, some, some um, pretty neat conclusions, I think in the near term here, but you know, we've been in the market with the new mobile app since May. Um, so it's, it's early days. Uh, the engagement I think has been great. The adoption rate is uh, certainly um, higher than we were expecting. Um, so we, we've seen a nice bump in the last couple of months in, in eagerness to participate and, and eagerness to, to go through and see the program out too. And that's the health of the, the health of the program is really what we look at across the funnel. You know, so we want to make sure the adoption at the top is, is very strong. We also want to make sure people are going through the, the program as well. Um, and if you're in the program longer, it's a greater opportunity that we can influence. So still early, you know, I'm, hopefully we'll be able to come back on and share those results with the group, but we're certainly encouraged. Uh, and I think some of the work that Ben and his team are doing independent of IntelliDrive, I think would give a signal that there's certainly um, uh, potential here to, uh, to really change behavior for the good. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get to a couple audience questions and mix them in with mine. We have one coming in from Lori Thompson and Lori is up in New England, and she's asking, I got a number of questions uh, similar to this. Uh, she's asking, now, why would a bad driver want to sign up for this? I mean, isn't it just self-selecting, or is everybody think they're good drivers, and everyone thinks that they can do this and get a discount, and uh, what about those that aren't such good drivers? Everyone thinks they're a great driver. Uh, but I think the important thing of IntelliDrive and, and programs like it I think you have to learn for yourself, you know, what kind of driver are you? And, you know, that I can certainly say with confidence from IntelliDrive, if the program's not for you, we have the opportunity to opt out, you know, and we give you that kind of free, um, you know, free trial in the program. Um, it's 90. How long, how long is the free trial? You have 45 days. So okay. if it's a program in most states, you have 45 days. Uh, and if you decide it's not for you, um, for whatever reason, um, you can opt out of the program there's, and there's really no penalty, you know, for opting out. So, you know, I, I think it's worth every driver uh, to at least attempt or try um, the program to see if you fall in that two out of three. And if you do, that's absolutely, um, I think, a, a reason to participate and a reason to, to sign up for the program. Okay. I, I'll chime in there just a little bit. We, we've done some um, qualitative research of our own where we, we identify uh, drivers with very high levels of distraction. Uh, and we do very in-depth qualitative interviews with them. We actually bring them into the office for a couple of hours and, and really try to understand how they think about um, what they do when they're behind the wheel and the distracted driving behavior. And I'll say that this isn't true for all of these drivers, but, but some of them are, are aware that they're doing this and, and they actually would really like to change their behavior. They're not happy about how much they're using their phone. They, in a lot of ways, a lot of drivers feel at the mercy of something that they're they're not you know like a smoking addiction something that they're, they they wish they could not do and they're actually looking for tools and help uh, and, and strategies um, for for how to how to change their own behavior and I'd say for drivers like that even if they you know they 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 are you know are distracted a lot or, or struggle with other driving behaviors if that's a desire that they that they have this can actually be a really great product for them. Okay, so so actually, Ben, let's let's talk about um, where phone technology stands today. So you, you gave us a good overview. What can't phones tell us today that they might in the future? Like, what are you thinking about is on the horizon for this technology? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the best way it's so hard to to look into the future. I guess the best way to to answer this question is to kind of look back. Um, you know, I've been at True Motion for over four years now, and just in that time, you know, I've I've seen a huge growth in the the variety of sensors that, that come on in smartphones. 
Um, so for example, today, you know, most phones have barometers that can measure air pressure. And so the phones use this for determining altitude, you know, how high you, up you are, what floor of the building you're on. Um, but you know, that can also be used for detecting uh, whether an airbag was deployed or not during a collision. Um, another example would be, you know, um, infrared point cloud sensors. So, you know, many new phones have um, these features like uh, that, that are used for the face ID on, on, on iOS that uh, can measure the 3D shape of your face and, and can be used to, to identify, you know, which person is using the phone. Um, so to answer, you know, I, I saw there was a, a q and in there about, you know, if uh, someone picks up the phone and, and, and uses it during a drive, can you tell whether it's the driver or the passenger? That's a sort of application of a new sensor. Um, if that data were made available um, by the phone makers, that, that could be used to, to, to answer a question like that. But you could also imagine that sensor, if the phone is mounted on the dashboard, tracking the driver's gaze or attention. Um, so based what I, on what I've seen so far, what I would expect over the next few years is more and different kinds of sensors uh, to become available on smartphones, you know, like more sophisticated proximity sensors and so on, and ones that I, you know, don't even, can't even imagine now. The end result is going to be, you know, the more sensors we have available on the phone, the more detail we'll, we'll be able to deduce about driving behavior from that data. Yeah. Okay. So maybe, right. the, maybe the one thing I would add there is even in the near term, what we want to continue to do is add more context. You know, I think that's the other piece where, um, we can add even more value for customers if, if we can add more contextual elements. So we, we talk a lot about, you know, speeding, but speeding has a lot of context around it. Um, not just simply a high rate of speed, but we can provide customers with a little bit more texture on, um, you know, speeding by roadway. You know, like there's, there's so much information I think we could bring that provides an even more robust picture of driving performance uh, that I think would overall continue to enhance how we think about um, driving behavior. Great. Okay, we have a big brother question coming in from Christy Smith. Christy says, occasionally I'll hear the customers and consumers have concerns that we're selling the data around their trips, in particular where and when they're traveling. Um, and so can you both comment on that, please? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think to, to the big brother element, um, you know, the, the question there is is really, you know, what, what do you tell a customer, I guess, um, who's concerned about, about that? Um, I, th I think there's two, there's two reasons uh, why I think you should, you should feel okay about that. I mean, I'll let Tom talk to, to data security and retention. Obviously, we as TrueMotion don't, don't own the data. We're not, you know, in a position to, uh, to, to sell it or use it in any other way than it's in, intended to by, by our customer, um, by travelers. But I think, you know, one of the things Tom's already mentioned is this is an entirely, you know, optional program. So if this is data that you're uncomfortable sharing, um, then you don't have to opt in. Um, and so, you know, I think the thing that, you know, the people tend to associate Big Brother with this. And that if you have, remember back to the book, 1984, you know, the George Orwell's Big Brother, his surveillance was not optional. That's what made that so, so scary. Um, so, so I think this is a different, it's a different flavor of, of, uh, um, of, of data sharing. And, and uh, I think that brings me to the, to the second reason is that, you know, just like any other online service we use today, there is a give or take with privacy. It's done in exchange for some benefit that you receive as a, as a customer. So, you know, we share our photos and our thoughts with Facebook um, and we do it because we feel that it's worth uh, the connection with friends and family that we get in, in exchange. And I think there, there's, some, there's some similarity here with, with customers choosing telematics program and say, okay, I am giving up a little bit of my privacy here by, by sharing that data with, with travelers. But in exchange, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, giving, I'm giving this to a very careful steward. Maybe that's where the, um, uh, the analogy with, with Facebook breaks down. I'm giving, I'm giving this to a very careful steward of my data. And I feel that it's easily worth that, you know, significant financial savings on, on my policy, for example. Yeah. And to Ben, to Ben, your point there, we, we don't sell any of the data to third parties. Um, it's a very specific uh, use case and it's, and it's specific to the IntelliDrive program. Um, and really the only thing we do with the data is uh, other than for um, pricing is to enhance our product. Uh, and that's, that's the true research and development that internally we use. We, we take great um, confidence in TrueMotion's ability from a privacy and security perspective. And we have the utmost um, attention to its security and privacy. So it's, it's really important to um, the confidence in the program for our customers, for our agents. 
Uh, but obviously, uh, it, to be really clear, we, we don't sell it. We don't use it for any other third party reason. Okay. Uh, another good question coming in from Roberta Givens here. With the advent of the COVID era, how is the information being gathered when drivers may not leave their home for days or even weeks at a time? And how does the lack of driving impact the IntelliDrive scores overall? Great question. Yeah, it's cer certainly a unique time uh, during COVID for sure. Um, and you know, while we saw uh, a change in the amount of miles uh, traveled during the period of time, what we're seeing is that that, that trend is changing. Um, and, and we can still have, so I think, a really good overall um, view of, of, a per, of an individual's driving behavior, even during COVID. And we've absolutely seen that. Um, and the interesting trend that we've also seen during the last couple of months is the interest, uh, the eagerness for customers to want to sign up for IntelliDrive. It's this, uh, I think, level of connection with, um, you know, driving and driving behavior that I think is resonating really well with customers during this period of time. So um, we weren't anticipating a, an increase in adoption in the, in the last couple of months, but we've absolutely seen it. Uh, and I think the, the conversation and the, the discussion agents and customers are having now is, you know, I, I want that deeper look uh, into how I'm performing. And I don't think it's a surprise that, you know, other folks in the industry are um, marketing their programs more aggressively. Uh, the last couple of months, and, and, and I certainly think we're, we're seeing some of the benefit of that. Um, but, you know, I think early on, it, you know, certainly what Ben described is, you know, we want to be, um, we want to be really thoughtful, too, of, of how we're driving. Uh, and the roadways may be a little less congested, um, uh, for sure, but that may also have a, an impact where maybe we're driving much faster. Uh, maybe we aren't paying attention as much as we were. You know, so I, I think it, it's providing a lot of value um, in making sure that we are continuing to be safe drivers, even in this period of time. Okay, a couple of questions coming in about speeding and about hard braking and how does the app really detect? So what do you consider speeding? Is it five miles over the, the limit? Is it 10 miles? And how is that kind of factored into whether I get an excellent score or a good score for that trip? Yeah, Tom, I, I can let you uh, answer answer the specifics of the scoring, but you know, in terms of uh, in terms of our, our general detection, we we tend to treat a uh, speeding of ten miles per hour over the speed limit as a as a speeding event, um, and then there's usually also uh, uh, a a high speed threshold above which we consider all um, all speeding events, yeah. uh, all, all driving to be uh, to be speeding. Um, but in terms of how that affects the score, I'll, I'll probably let Tom take yeah. that. Yeah, Ben's describing where we are and where we want to go all in one. Okay. Um, so where we are today is as a threshold um, around speeding. So I think high rates of speed are um, are a uh, event or a penalty in, in your score. So that if you're doing it for a, a long duration of time, um, that's obviously worse and that's riskier. So it's, it's really the duration of time that you're speeding at very high rates. Um, what I described before is as we continue to evolve the program, we add distraction, we bring contextual elements in, we wanna, we wanna do what Ben's describing around creating a little bit more of a speed threshold. So depending on if you're on secondary roads or on highways, maybe a different opinion about the rate of speed relative to the speed limit on posted roads. Okay, a question coming in from Andy Stapor. Andy, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. If a driver opts out, Will their rate increase sharply by default? So after 45 days, they realize uh -uh, I'm not a good driver. I'm opting out of this. Is there a is there a penalty? So in those situations, so if you're beyond that opt out window and you decide not for me, don't like how I'm doing, um, what we advocate is a retry, and we allow customers to uh, retry as many times as they would like. Um, and in that retry, it's basically like a clean slate. You know, I think that's a really important part of the, of the retry capability is we're not looking back at the other 50 days or 90 days that maybe we're okay. You know, it's really a clean slate. Um, and that works both ways. If you want to try again, uh, just because you're a hyper aggressive person and you want to better yourself and, you know, you want um, a perfect score on the test, that's great. You know, we allow that capability. And if you think something has changed about yourself, so if your situation has changed, you can absolutely retry the program. Um, and we'll always use your, uh, your latest results as your, uh, your, going, your go forward until the drive score. Okay, excellent. Uh, another question coming in from Chris Jerry. 
Has True Motion or Travelers used or consider using telematic data to assess factors such as unsafe driving, for example, on intoxication or disability? Um, I, I'm, I'm not familiar enough with uh, any research on, on that within with Intramotion to comment on that. I, I don't I, I don't believe so, but. Yeah, but there's no detection on intoxication at the moment, correct? Not in the IntelliDrive app, no. Okay, all right. Lots of questions that's coming in from our friends in New York State. When is this gonna be available? So uh, I don't know if Tom, you wanna to comment on that, but I, I assume we're trying to get the 38 to 50. Um, uh, Yes, yes. So 38 states today. Um, New York is one of the states where we have our new auto product, but not IntelliDrive. So that mismatch doesn't occur too much. Um, okay. New York is a state where we're, you know, we're having conversations about how we do it. It's, it's certainly a little bit of a challenge from a uh, regulatory perspective, but know that our team is working hard to figure that out. Okay. Uh, last question is going to be a tough one, so I'm going to put it to either of you. Uh, is telematic information currently discoverable in claim litigation? So it's not today. Uh, it is not. We, we do not use it in any claim um, uh, discovery process at all. Okay, terrific. Um, listen, we are coming towards the end of our program, so uh, I just really want to thank both Ben and Tom for taking time to share more details about this IntelliDrive app. We have a number of questions coming in uh, about what, where are the 38 states, so obviously ask your, uh, your traveler's uh, contact for that, and, and is it available somewhere on a website, I assume, as well? Yeah, you can go to travelers.com slash IntelliDrive. Okay, great. Well, we appreciate you both, Ben and Tom, for the work you're doing to encourage safer driving behaviors. Our next webinar coming up is going to be September 16th. As some of you may know, I personally spent 12 years working on uh, the House Budget Committee and Senate Finance Committee on Capitol Hill. So for this next webinar, uh, my colleague is going to turn the tables on me and interview me uh, on my take on the economic and political outlook. So for all of you TLC agents out there, this is kind of my uh, economic and political um, presentation. So uh, go to travelersinstitute.org to register for that program. And also all of our past webinars, we've had a number of terrific ones. You'll see them on the screen right now, including my interviewing the Dean of Stanford Medical School uh, last uh, Wednesday. And he talks about the outlook for vaccines and therapeutics in, uh, in, in COVID and the FDA approval process. So that was a really fascinating one. Uh, also about liability issues um, and the liability shield for businesses, that's also a, an excellent one. So please go to the Travelers Institute website to view those replays. This particular one will be replayed as well, and that'll be available in a few days. So uh, check those out. And uh, thank you again for joining us all. Stay safe, my friend. Put those masks on, wash my hands, and I'll hope to see you soon, especially on these webinars. Take care. <laughs>